board. Awesome. We are going. Um, still see people signing on, but um, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Barney, uh, Director of Sales and Marketing for MBYLL. I um, want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. Um, this whole webinar series that we've been able to put on this week and next uh, started with us a quick conversation um, with Trilogy Lacrosse uh, about 10 days or so ago after we had to cancel our in-person coach education clinics. And we started just uh, spitballing ideas of what, what could we do and uh, talked about doing something online. And then, so they stepped up big time and this week and are, have been, are running um, webinars every night. And along with that, that opened it up to several of our other partners and friends who um, said, hey, I'd love to do something. Marty Bowes every morning this week at 10 a.m. has been, been doing a, a different webinar um, on some different tactics. We've had face-offs and goalie stuff coming up and going on. So it's, it's really been great to see as I know we're all going through a, a tough time, you know, even if God forbid and hopefully everyone is healthy, but uh, you know, just with everything that's going on, hopefully this provides some outlet to sit back and watch and talk lacrosse for a little bit. Um, and then, you know, obviously take away, learn everything. And as well, we're all hoping that we'll be able to get outside at some point uh, this spring, early summer and, and play some lacrosse as we're still trying to do around here. So tonight um, excited and uh, honored to have uh, Ryan Boyle here with us. Um, I could go on and on about his accolades, but I think I put that in a lot of the, the bio here, you know, Ryan um, is one of the most decorated lacrosse players um, in history, but uh, really just one of the smartest players I've had the privilege of being around and see play and how he understands the game. For those uh, who haven't uh, or didn't see Ryan play in person or anything, um, while he is retired, obviously everything he does with Trilogy Lacrosse, but he's also Thank the, God uh, I'm retired. <laughs> he took a beating. This poor guy after every game. Uh, <laughs> But he calls the games for, for the PLL and for anyone who, you know, wants to learn about lacrosse while watching it, Ryan's one of the best when he's calling the game. I love the way he talks about it and basically teaches while, while you're watching it. So um, I'll let uh, Ryan played his college ball at, at uh, Princeton, uh, won, a, won a national championship, won four MLL championships, two world championships, a whole bunch of records and other accolades. Uh, but I don't want to pump him up too much. Uh, for it, but I'll let Ryan take it over and talk about the uh, the attack position. And uh, again, any questions, throw it in the chat or Q and A, and we'll bounce it around the rest of uh, the next hour or so. All yours, Ryan. Thanks, thanks, KB. Appreciate the the uh, the generous intro, and um, it's always a pleasure working with you. Back to our Canon days, and and now into you know the MBYLL. It's a you know it's a, really a model organization, um, and and um, I, I've already you know, spoken to a number of people kind of in and out of the game and, you know, what you guys have done as an organization and, and your leadership on this front, um, you know, is truly appreciated. I, I think as people look, we're all trying to find the silver lining in all this. And, and I think kind of, um, you know, doubling down, tripling down on, on the coaches training, um, you know, and I think just, just having an opportunity to interact and, you know, I was joking around about looking at some of those names. It's just it's great to see some of those names. Um, and, and hopefully um, some of the things that I can share tonight, um, you know, are helpful in everybody's kind of journey. And, and certainly, uh, as is the case with any of these presentations, we, we hopefully will get a little off script. Um, you know, that, that would be kind of, that would be fantastic. Um, I, before I share my screen, I just need to turn off these messages uh, because Lord knows, um, you know, at, at this hour, you know, the old, the old, um, the old uh, text threads might just like stop. So I'll just, uh, I don't even know how to turn these off actually. Um, well, you know what? We'll just have to live with it if some, some barrage, um, well, Canon's text messages come through because we're all, we're all dealing with this. So um, without further ado, we'll kind of transition here um, into, um, oh, there we go, into the PowerPoint. So hopefully everybody can see this. Um, and good, great. So what I tried to do was was focus in on 
And, and look, I think part of the, the trouble with some of this is sometimes is you can be so broad uh, and KB, if people pop up on like channels or questions, I, I'm, uh, I just might need your assistant, but you know, you can be so broad in, in some of this. And so we're, I, I tried to kind of stay somewhat narrowly focused on, you know, obviously just the attack position and, and then more specifically looking at like that developing kind of middle school player, obviously, which is catering to kind of the MBYLL, that youth kind of middle school progression, um, you know, somebody that is, you know, a, a town rec council player and then even into club. It's, it's funny, you know, we work with certain groups and they're like, all right, so give me like your special drills. And it's like, I did the same drills like when I was in fourth grade in my backyard, like with my brother, my older brother. And then like when I would get ready for a cannon season, like I would do those same drills. Like there is no like secret sauce. It's just, you have to practice and you have to work hard and you have to master the fundamentals. And like the beauty of certain drills is that you can go kind of version 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, but like the mechanics, like the setup and the execution are largely the same. It's just kind of what you're doing kind of throughout them. So um, in terms of just kind of what, what, you know, how we see these fundamentals, like every, you know, every athlete, especially when they're starting out, every lacrosse player, you know, ground balls, cradling, throwing, catching, footwork, and shooting. Um, you know, these are all things that, that really kind of independently of what position, like, especially starter, like if you're just starting out, you need to kind of have those down. Um, I'll kind of gloss over these drills and go to the whiteboard when we go to more stuff. So in, in terms of kind of how we look at, you know, offense, like, you know, so oftentimes people try to get like, macro or like oh let's just kind of roll the ball out and play and I, I think it's really important that you try to like look into like smaller units that you can kind of build up um kind of individually so uh, or stack on top of each other rather so you know, the most obvious one is is kind of a one-on-one -on -one. um and I think a lot of times people focus you know on going to the goal and you know, just as important is you know the ability to handle pressure and the ability to, to, to kind of handle the ball um, as a ball carrier in, in kind of the open field. Um, then you look at kind of a two on two and, and obviously, you know, so much right now is made of the two man game. Um, but I, I think just as critically of that is understanding how to respect what is going on within the course of a one-on-one -on -one and just play off of that yourself, which is kind of that one-on-one -on -one plus one. It's, Kind of like a, you know you're like the third man on a on a on a date right the third wheel um, to a, to a degree there's the one on going going on and you're just kind of watching it um, as an active watcher and then kind of bumping up to the three on three um, you know similar deal in terms of there's this one on one going on and then what are the other two people doing um, the most natural of which is kind of what often what is often referenced as kind of a triangle rotation or there's a two man going on and I'm that kind of innocent bystander kind of watching that. And typically that, that happens within kind of crease play. And this, this is a kind of by and large looking at things from like an attack perspective. Um, so, you know, what are, what are our goals, um, you know, as an, as an attackman here, um, you know, pardon the, I guess it's not technically a pun, but obviously, you know, you beat your man and score. Um, you know, if you, you know, if you can beat your man and someone supports and someone slides to you, then you need to be able to, to move the ball. Um, those are obviously very on ball heavy techniques. Um, you know, off ball, you want to be able to create space for your teammate and, and be able to kind of get open for a shot using kind of a variety of techniques. Um, again, back to like the narrow focus of this, obviously we could talk about, um, you know, other aspects of the game, such as riding, but we were trying to focus really kind of hone this conversation more on, um, kind of the offensive side of things, you know, scoring goals and, and, and being and being aggressive uh, as an offensive player. So, you know, what are we looking at from a technical standpoint? We're talking about stick handling, dodging, shooting, and, and kind of off ball play. Um, so those are the kind of things that we're going to talk about tonight and, and look at specific ways. And, and I know we've got some coaches. We've also got some parents, right, KB, that are probably like, just got that announcement about May 4th. I think there was a North Carolina parent that said May 15th. It's like, holy hell, what do I do with my kid in the backyard, right? Um, so I tried to like have a mix of like, 
all right, what am I doing, you know, with my son in the backyard? Like, what are some things that you can do? What did you practice when you were kind of growing up on your own? What are some things that I can easily do kind of in, in my backyard, um, you know, without necessarily any supervision? Or like, if I'm a, if I'm a parent, I want to be active, what are some things I can do kind of, you know, with, with my son? Or I've got, holy bejesus, I've got two boys, or I got three boys, you know, can I, can I smash them together? Like, what, what can I do in kind of that instance? Um, so, um, so all these things, we're going to kind of go over some, some teaching points, some coaching points that you can kind of, you know, write down um, and, and have in terms of like the, the using lacrosse language, and then maybe some drills that you can either do in your backyard or do, you know, eventually when you, uh, if and when you do get a feel later this spring, summer, uh, fall, um, you know, whatever that may next be. Um, so, so uh, stick handling. So, you know, what are we talking about here? Uh, we're talking about cradling, we're talking about stick placement and protection, um, and then footwork. Uh, and then the accompanying drills that I'm going to go over, you know, on, on this, this whiteboard is the string line, change of direction, zigzag stick handling, pivot foot protection drill, um, and 10 yard fight. So, I think with regards to cradling, um, you know, like one hand cradling has kind of become like a lost art. Um, and obviously as players are, are just starting out, you know, two hands is going to be more natural. Um, you know, some things that I, I always see that are really, you will, if you want to be like a stickler for the, for the fundamentals, you know, regardless of whether you're cradling hands, you know, you want to make sure you have your top hand you know, all the way at the top kind of touching the plastic. Um, one of the things that I had growing up that I found super useful is my dad actually put tape, you know, basically where my hand should be so that as I moved it kind of up and down the handle, I had that tactile reminder of like, okay, I just felt, you know, the tape and now I know where my hand is supposed to be. Um, and that's something that I, I carried throughout. Um, you know, all the way up to, you know, our, our Canon days together, like I would always put tape um, and it became a little bit more nuanced, but you know, I would actually have tape where my fingers went specifically. Um, but I liked having some tape that had like that zone. Um, so I kind of knew like, okay, once I've hit that tape, now I'm in kind of that, the, where my hand should be with regards to, to cradling, whether it's one hand or two hands. Um, but when you do teach one hand cradling, you want to try to have the stick you know, perpendicular as possible and not, you know, parallel. Um, and then with regard to your arm placement, this is where I really think, you know, there's, there's, there's not kind of one way to eat a Reese's and there's not one way to have your hand out. Um, so this is a, a matter of comfort level. You know, I think what a lot of people teach is kind of arm out, kind of thumb down. That's kind of a really key, key piece. Um, and then other people like to teach kind of arm up you know, you see a lot of Duke players do this, kind of their arm up, hand up. Um, and that kind of the thought process with that is it protects the head of your stick. That never felt natural to me. Maybe I was just like too weak to hold my hand up that long. Um, but I wanted my arm kind of closer to my, my waist um, such that I could easily transition from a one hand cradle to now I've got it at the bottom of my stick and I, I can get kind of rid of the ball. Um, so to this stick placement, stick protection, a really like easy talking point that you want to have, like, and, and I always love like putting these in quotation marks is like, you want to teach your players to have what's called a quiet stick. Um, so you don't want to see a lot of like back and forth, back and forth. And, um, you know, you see a lot of players now will like, instead of having that stick perpendicular, it's really kind of tilted one way or the other. Um, and there's like this sawing motion. Um, so instead of a, a easy rock and easy cradle, you know, focusing on the elbow and the wrist, they want to like saw logs. Um, and I, I don't, it, 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 I think like might, maybe it just kind of feels natural, but I think as much as possible, you want to focus on getting kind of that hand and that thumb, you know, up near the armpit. And if you kind of have that, then it's just a simple rock of the, the elbow, a simple wrist, a, a, a roll the wrist. And that's really an easier way, I think, to teach it and, um, and keeps it quiet. Um, so 
And then the last thing is, is footwork. And, and we'll get to that uh, with regards to some of these. Um, but it's really like any, anything athletic in really across all sports. Um, you know, you talk about anything related to your upper body or your whole body. Um, and it's really easy to focus on what's, you know, very salient. Um, but really everything comes from your legs. So, you know, baseball pitchers, golfers, um, you know, Dave Madeira is on this. I'm, I'm sure he'll bring up skiing. Like, like everything comes from your, your kind of lower body. Um, so if you don't have the proper footwork, then all everything is going to kind of get kind of out of whack. Um, and, and that's going to come in, in play kind of more with, with, the, um, with these specific dodges or specific moves that we talk. But really, you know, the, the biggest thing, again, from a teaching point and talking point is kind of your, you should have your man, then your body, then your stick. So your body should be turned so your opposite foot uh, is towards your opponent. And that's going to allow you to have to kind of proper, proper stick placement, stop proper stick protection. Hey, Ryan, sorry, one second. Someone commented yeah. that they couldn't see you. I can, so I'm not sure. Can can oh. others just in the chat, if you can say, if you can see Ryan as he's as he's talking. There are some different views um, with this. So sometimes you got to – I'm not sure what that first one means. I Brad, can see him. Brad Smith's – yeah, Brad Smith. Okay. Me, so. All right. So it might just be that one. I know there's some different – uh, some different views on that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no, all good. Um, t -t 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 sorry. Ah, okay. So, all right. And sorry, Kev, is the whiteboard at the bottom of the top? Uh, at the bottom under, um, where is it? Uh, I think I need to get out. Uh, under share on the bottom. Stop sharing. Oh man, we practiced this too. I know. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you probably got to yeah. unshare your screen and then oh, stop share. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And then go down to share and then the whiteboard pops. You can. Yep. Sorry. Yep. That's it. We pro. So, you know, if we're looking at kind of 10 yard fight, um, so this is, or sorry, sorry, restraining line change of direction. So this is very much kind of an, an open field stick handling. And, and the beauty of this is you can use really any, any line you want. So, you know, if this is, uh, if this was the midfield line, if this is the restraining line, um, if this is the sideline, if this could be in theory, kind of two cones, um, kind of whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so you've got, you know, players kind of lined up along that line. Um, and then, you know, you've got obviously the coach is the star, you know, naturally. Um, so, um, you know, basically you've got them all kind of with a ball in their stick and you want to start them off kind of all on, on one hand. So, um, you know, this player would be kind of in their, you know, right hand. This player would be in their, and now I'm just trying to show off in terms of the whiteboard. You know, this player would be in their right hand, and then this player would be in their right hand. So you've got, everybody's got a ball in their stick. Everybody's in their right hand. And, you know, you want on the whistle or, you know, by the way, always have a whistle. Um, but they all kind of run in the same direction right? They all kind of run in, in the same direction. And you can have this be a one-hand cradle. You can have this be a two-hand cradle. Um, and then on the next whistle, you know, they plant and then they change direction. So now they're going from right to left. So they start this way all together. You blow the whistle. They go to the opposite direction. You blow the whistle again and they run they change hands and they go in the opera direction, so on and so forth um, until kind of, um, you know, the, the, the repetition is over. And then you can kind of swap in, you know, another three or four players. So the, the beauty of this is, you know, you can get a lot of reps. There's not a lot of standing around. And if there is any sort of mistake that's made, you know, then the kids are going to kind of run into each other 
um, which I always find is nice to bring a little bit of humor to practice and also like, well, you know what, now the kids are kind of self-policing, like instead of me yelling at them for making a mistake, if two kids just ran into each other, um, then that's, you know, pr probably a better uh, teaching point than anything I'm going to say verbally. Um, with regards to this, even though the, the arrows were kind of like, you know, progress back, you want them to kind of run all back and forth and of along this line. And that, that's going to um, help you kind of retain a little bit of order um, and organization. Um, and again, that's going to allow you to say, okay, well, if I've got another, you know, if, I've, if I'm working with six attackmen, I can go in two groups of three. If I've got, you know, eight attackmen, I can go two groups of four. So um, maybe I have a super long line. At, and you you kind of want to adjust this based off of kind of how much space you know, you're, you're working with. Um, so typically when we do this, you know, we really want to work on roll dodges al almost exclusively. Um, so as they're running, you know, to the right, um, you know, as they're running to the right, when you blow that whistle, you, know, you want them to plant on their left foot, roll such that their back is towards the coach, kind of imitating the d defense is kind of on this side, right? change hands keep their stick between their shoulders as they roll keep it between between their shoulders between their legs and then once they have now changed directions take one extra step before changing hands so those are the key focal points you want to have on that roll dodge um and the, the the big thing there is if you're if you're going you know whether it's two hands or one hand if you're going one hand cradle here you know, you want to try to transfer hand to hand. So not kind of one on top of each other, but hand to hand. And if you're going two hands to two hands, you want to let go with your top hand and slide your bottom hand up and then replace it at the bottom. So those are the things you want to focus in on in terms of with regards to that, that stick transfer. Okay. After you kind of get the hang of things here, you go maybe you know, two or three times each, you know, then you can layer in kind of this coach calling out, calling out number, uh, sorry, uh, putting his hand up, you know, with different numbers after every single whistle blow so that as they run, you know, as they run, and now I blow the whistle and they change directions. I'm putting up a number and they have to call that out. And what this is really teaching, obviously, is to get your head up. And after you roll dodge, is kind of whipping that head around and up and now seeing the whole field. So I find that to be a nice thing that you can kind of layer on um, to, in, to ensure that a player isn't staring at the ground, isn't staring at their hands, isn't staring at another teammate. That allows you to kind of dictate that, hey, I'm actually teaching them to keep their head up you know, while this is going on. Um, and this is why I think it's nice to have kind of a line because then, you know, they're not like running kind of, you know, all over the place, you know, during these, you know, transfers where you got like, you know, this guy's going this way and this guy's going that way. There's a nice kind of natural line there for them to use. That's, that's kind of restraining line, change of direction. Um, you can weave in, once you get like the hang of things, you can kind of weave things in if you'd like, where um, now if I want to do what's, what's called a hesitation or a hezzy, um, you know, I can use a single whistle for that, or you know, I can always just yell that out. Um, so a little change of speed here. So a single whistle is a change of speed and they keep going. And then a double whistle is a change of direction. And you can kind of add that in. You can add in kind of an open field rocker step where they come and they kind of act like they're going to roll back and then continue on. So like everything, you know, version 1.0 of this drill is just getting the hang of things. Um, and then once you get that down, then it's like, okay, what else, what other moves do we want to incorporate into this? So, before I uh, kind of set up the next one, I'll, I'll um, you know, ask if anybody has any questions while I, uh, while I set this next one up.
Okay. Next one is zig oh, zigzag. Uh, can you explain the one hand cradle hand to hand transfer? Uh, sure. So you have kind of your top hand at the top of the stick. And as you transfer, you're just physically placing that shaft, or that handle into the other hand and then, and then letting go. It, it, that's the cleanest way. If you know what you want to try to avoid is kind of this thing, which occasionally does happen. Um, but it's, it's not preferred, but like in the heat of the moment, you know, sometimes that does happen. So, so hopefully that, uh, no problem. So this is uh, zigzag stick handling. So again, um, you know, you've got, oh, so these, these are, uh, oops, these are, uh, these are cones, these black, black dots are just cones. You've got a, uh, a group of players behind the first cone. Everybody's got a ball in their stick. Um, and, you know, what you're looking for is for them to run you know, a great concept is just human beings running from one cone to the next, by the way, just, you can set up about a million drills of that, but this is just players running from cone to cone. And when this first player gets to this second cone, you know, the next player can then progress. So what are we working on here? You know, we're working on, you know, again, change of direction and change of speed and here you can kind of mix in splits and roll dodges kind of at each cone. So you could start the drill and say, okay, I want a split dodge at every single cone, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Or you could say, I want to roll dodge at every one. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to roll, I'm going to come here, I'm going to roll, I'm going to come here, I'm going to roll, so on and so forth. You could say, I want to split here then roll here split here then roll here so this gives you some freedom kind of going going back and forth um in order to just maximize your amount of repetitions and then you know once the player kind of ends you know once the player kind of gets to the end you know they just set up back here and then when the last guy in line is finished then you just simply you know missy elliott put that thing down flip it reverse it and you just go the opposite direction, and now you're going back this way to complete at this end down here. So this is you know, zigzag stick handling. Um, the beauty of this is you're just getting a, a lot of reps. You know, I put, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I count that correctly, Kevin? Oh my God, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> That's scary. You could, you know, you could have 12 of these cones, you know, you, you, so you could have a lot of them. So, you know, so you can get a, a lot of, of repetition. So if you're just starting out, let's just say you've got a, you know, a second grader, right. And they're just learning how to cradle. Don't worry about any sort of hand transfers. Just get them used to running from cone to cone, right. Then just cradling that's fine. Okay. Then once they get the hang of things, then you're talking about split dodging from side to side. Okay. So if I'm going to split dodge, I'm, I'm coming here, I'm running to my right, right? This player is running to his right. Might be easier if I reverse this, but so he's got his stick in his right hand. He's planting his right foot. He's changing hands and he's changing directions such that now he's running with his left hand, running to his left, plants with his left foot, plants, changes direction and changes hands. So you've got your right hand this way. You've got your left hand here. You've got your right hand here and so on and so forth as you progress through this, this, this gauntlet, if you will. So the other, before kind of moving on to the next drill, the other kind of thing that, that conceptually what we're trying to do here with the restraining line and now the zigzag is 
all these guys, all these players, they have a ball on their stick. So I think so often you see practices, you know, if you ever go to a soccer practice, like they have a ball on their foot all the time. And, and then you go to a lacrosse practice and the kids are standing there in a lot of cases and don't have a ball on their stick. So these, these two drills are kind of built with the premise of like a player should have a ball in their stick the whole time and just get comfortable with the ball in their stick. And kind of even when they're, even when they're waiting in line. So. You had a question from the, the last drill. Oh. In a QA and a there. Who's, Mi who's Missy Elliott? <laughs> no, Missy, One before Missy that. Elliott. <laughs> oh. Do you want to have the player on the stick on the outside towards the line? No, you want to have a stick on away from the line. Um, so I'll answer that question too. Uh, Tyler, it's not Missive Elliott, it's Missy Elliott. <laughs> So that's just a simple uh, Google that you can do post uh, this webinar and um, you can thank me like 10 hours later. Um, okay. Um, so back to that, if I'm like this and I've got this, these players lined up like this, we want their stick to be away uh, away from the line. Does that make sense? So as I run this way, I've got my stick in my right hand away from the inside. I roll back and now my sticks on in the left hand away from the line. And there's a, Another question in both the chat and the Q and A. Okay. Doing the rollback dodge when switching hands, do you want to keep the stick close to the body or out further away from the defender? You want to keep the stick close to your close to your body. It, I mean, by keeping it close to your body, you're actually going to um, you know prevent uh, stick checks. So um, you know, there are instances where you want to like punch your hand away and roll, um, but um, I can show that to you later on, but, but typically you want to try to keep it you know, tight to your body from a stick protection standpoint. Um, so, uh, do, do, do. so the, I'll just jump ahead in terms of, um, oh, and by the way, this distance, you know, this can be, you know, eight yard, eight to 10 yards. Um, you know, depending on the age group. So you can maybe make it a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, like you're looking at like eight, eight to 12 yards. So, um, can I, now Ed's just taking over this class. So <laughs> Ed, this is like the longest, <laughs> I can't read this right now, Ed. Oh my God. Ed, that's a, not a question. That's a, that's a chat comment. Um, all right, so spread these out. So this is like a, so this is a, whenever I like set up practices, I try to think of like the functionality of things, like the organization. So this is like going from zigzag stick handling into this next, um, into this next drill is, is pretty easy. And, you know, you can either leave the cones kind of as they are, um, you know, you can also, you know, use kind of some sort of sideline or end line um, as well. Um, so this we just, we call kind of 10 yard fight. And this is, you know, basically this offensive player is, is the X um, and the defensive player uh, is the star, which uh, Kevin, I don't know if Mitch used the stars last night. Um, but I know he was, he was like really appreciative that we decided since there wasn't an O, um, <laughs> that we, we, I, we were going to use a star, but anyway, the, the whole point is for this offensive player to get from this side of the field and beat the defender, you know, to the other side. Um, and you know, this, you can kind of go live and just kind of have at it. W what I think is really helpful from, especially from a development standpoint is to try to make it 
So these players kind of work in concert, especially early on. So what you're doing is you're taking that zigzag stick handling and you're kind of putting it to practical use where like the offensive player is basically wants to run in a certain direction and the defensive player is going to kind of match it. You know, he obviously runs out of territory here. So he's got to you know, roll and change direction. And simultaneously, the defenseman should kind of drop step and kind of turn his hips and run with him. Again, the offensive player kind of hits this barrier. So he's got to then roll and change direction. And this defenseman, oops, this defenseman kind of does so in concert. So this is, you know, in an ideal world, you kind of get a ton of changes of direction and changes, uh, uh, changes of direction and changing hands kind of in line with these, with these barriers. So you know, typically speaking, you know, you're seeing an offensive player uh, use kind of a roll dodge here. Um, but these are also where you can use a change of speed, that little kind of hesitation that we talked about here in the middle. You know, maybe he starts running. Uh, maybe he you know, starts running, kind of hesitates, and then explodes, right? And then explodes. That's one thing. Maybe here he does a little rocker where he acts like he's going to go and then rolls right back and tries to, tries to sneak along the sideline. Um, so you can kind of incorporate you know, different, different moves as you go along. But this 10-yard fight now allows you to have kind of um, – you know, both offensive players and defensive players kind of practicing their craft. And also if you've got players kind of lined up a little bit, it's also not, not, it's kind of fun from a cultural standpoint in terms of guys, you know, kind of giving, you know, hyping each other up and, and things like that. So this is a way to incorporate, you know, the attackmen who are working on their stick protection and the defensemen who are working on their footwork. Um, you can kind of incorporate them into the same, into the same drill. So. We, we call this kind of 10 yard fight. You know, one thing back just to this, the zigzag um, stick handling thing, um, you know, another like version 2.0 that you can kind of layer on, um, you know, we'll change the, we'll change the, the coach to like a heart. You know, you can also, you know, kind of position yourself in this middle um, and do kind of the same thing with those numbers, you know, you can incorporate that same kind of concept, you know, as guys are going back and forth after they change direction, you know, to look up and you've got a number that they've got to call out. Um, you know, you also sometimes see this drill with, you know, a coach positioned behind a cone, you know, such that if a, if a player, you know, when he runs from here to here, you know, this would be an opportunity you know, for, for, for right here, for the coach to maybe throw a back check or a front check to try to, you know, dislodge the ball and, and see if there's kind of stick, you know, stick protection there. Any questions? I feel like that's a, a, a fair amount of stuff that you can do in the backyard, um, kind of, or on your own. And I'm just, in terms of, uh, I'll uh, want to keep things kind of moving along here. So I was going to go to another, another set here. Uh, how long do you run these drills? You know, I, I think 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, to, it, 10 minutes is the zigzag stuff. I think beyond that, you, you might have mutiny on your hands. Um, so hopefully that uh, answers your question. Um, back, back to kind of the, the, you know, PowerPoint. Um, so the next is kind of dodging. So change of speed, change of direction, change of hands and, and footwork. We kind of talked about all these things. Um, and then with regards to drills, you know, moves at X, moves at goal on extended, moves at five and five. You know, these are, these are kind of like skeleton drills that you can do. Uh, I know I'm boring you, Kev, sorry. Uh, these are moves at X, goal on extended, five and five. These are skeleton stuff you can do on your own. Uh, and then with regards to one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you've got an end line version, which is kind of a classic version, a short version, and then kind of an island version. So, um, you know, I'll quickly, quickly transition back to the, uh, to the whiteboard here. So, um, so this is, this is something that, um, uh, here we go. 
So, you know, if this is your crease, right? And, you know, your goal, oh my God, this, that looks like my backyard goal. So that, that is pretty good actually. So this is something that, you know, I used to do like growing up, like all, all the time. Um, but, you know, you kind of set up cones at five and five. You set up cones at goal line extended. And then you set up cones like dodging from behind. So this is kind of three drills kind of all in one. So you could set up this this drill and or you can set up this, these cones and, and kind of do one, do two, or do three. So um, I think of things in three zones. Oh, that's not gonna do it. You know, this is, this is kind of zone one. This is kind of X. This is zone two. And then this is zone three. So when I think of conceptually trying to dodge from behind, you know, I think in these three zones. So you've got your moves from behind, you've got your moves from goal line extended, and then you've got your moves at five and five. And so your moves from behind, this is like Jordan Wolf zone. This is like Michael Sauer's zone. Um, this is I'm faster than you. This is this is this was me at age 13. I'm just faster than you. So if you can beat your man back here, all you have to do is hug the crease, turn the corner, shoot and score. Once you get old and slow or just aren't born with the same genes or don't hit the weight room as hard as other people, then you need to win these two zones. You just are like living to, to, to you're just trying to survive back here and you're trying to get somebody here and here and out technique them. So that's the way you want to like teach kids. Like if you're not going to be able to beat your defenseman back here, just get here and get here and then you can actually maybe score a goal so this is where you want to look at like split and rolls this is z dodge and s dodge and these are moves at five and five inside roll rocker step and question mark but this progression is how i like teach things to kids and this is kind of how i think conceptually so you you run by your guy don't overthink things you're just faster human being turn the corner shoot the score if you get here and the defensemen are taught to push you away. Now, what are we doing? We're, we're pushing back, we're popping, and then we're attacking with either Z or S. If I can score there, great. If I can't, then now I'm up here and I'm doing inside roll, rocker step, and question mark. Kevin, I, I hope that no, like these messages aren't popping up, are they? Hopefully not. No, thank God. Okay. All right. So, so this is something that you can do, you know, this is something that you can do. Um, this is how I would prepare for all my professional teams. So I would just start back here, either at X or, or here. And you know, basically you can, you can have, you know, multiple players going at the same time, but so you want to, and sometimes actually it's, it's best to, to start with like a, another cone. So, you know, I'm coming here, I'm running up and then now on change of speed, change of direction, I'm splitting, I'm splitting towards kind of this middle area right here, towards, towards X. And when I get to this cone, now I'm rolling and attacking here. So you could start the drill just by 
split or split dodge here, roll dodge, turn the corner, shoot and score. So that's, that's like the simplest way of, in terms of from progression standpoint, is just going like that. Split, roll, turn the corner, shoot and score. Then you can go split, hesitation, turn the corner, shoot and score. All right? Split, little hesitation, like the Rob Pinnell kind of rocker at X, turn the corner, shoot and score. Okay? Then, with regards to this cone, what we're talking about is when you get here, what you really want to do is kind of sit down and kind of own this spot. You almost want to over exaggerate it. And then you want to pop. You want to get width. You want to kind of float on your feet with your head up. Okay. A lot of people teach putting that bottom hand on the stick to act like you're feeding. And now the defenseman's going to kind of come at you. He's going to, he's going to kind of chase you. That's the easiest time to dodge a defenseman where they're coming directly at you. Right. And then from there, if they have a poor angle and they're approaching your underneath foot or your bottom, uh, 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 your under, you know, your, your, your foot towards the end line, then you attack top side with what's called a Z dodge. Okay. If a defenseman comes up top side and his hips are facing towards the end line, right? Oh, this is what I've been looking for. Then, then you go with what's called an S dodge. So you roll, you roll back here, you roll, you get some depth, and then you reattack in this direction. So you've got your pop and attack Z, you've got your pop, roll S. All right, do I see that? So pop, reattack to a shot, that's Z, pop, roll reattack this lane that's an s dodge right this right here this is become like very popularized in terms of shooting a backhanded shot so i i kind of let the kids have some freedom here especially if this is like a a right-handed player you know you see you know lyle thompson do this a lot where on this pop and now roll you know you're in your right hand here well, if you reattack with your right hand, you know, sometimes switching that back to your left, even though it's the proper move and you're going to increase your angle, you kind of leave yourself susceptible to a stick check or a trail check, rather. Um, and a lot of kids would rather just bring their stick across and do a twister or go back, like backhanded, kind of Lyle Thompson style. Then there's moves at five and five. And for whenever we teach kind of five and five, you know, we won't like, I mean, you can have them go through all this progression, but you know, what I really like to do is just have the kids start, you know, you know, kind of right, right here. Um, again, just, I'm trying to eliminate this and try to get as many reps as possible. Um, so they'll just start here. They'll run up to the cone and then they'll do, you know, one of the three corresponding moves at, at five and five in, in inside roll. So an inside roll. So if I'm coming up here with my right hand, I'm planting my left foot. I'm rolling back towards the inside, keeping my stick nice and tight. I am not, am not, am not fading away. I'm going to get in front of the cage to pay the price, right? And I'm going to fake near pipe, fake high near pipe, take that extra step and then kind of bury in that low and away corner. So no stick, no stick transfer here. No uh, uh, changing of hands, you know. Then the, the rocker, you know, I'm running up. I'm planting that same inside foot, that same left foot. I'm swinging my body underneath. I'm bringing my stick. And then what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the defenseman to bring his stick to. So once I see that stick, then I know I can kind of – then immediately I can kind of roll right back and get top side to, to create that shot. So sometimes people like kind of think this is like this short little thing. You really want to roll. Sometimes it takes longer. It's like an elongated rocker. You see that, and then, and then you kind of roll back. Um, and then lastly is the question mark. 
So I'm carrying up, I'm planting that same left foot. And then some people, they teach either a one or a three step question mark. So, um, you know, I think with younger players, a lot of cases, the three steps is just takes, it's, it's a little bit easier for them to get their feet underneath of them, but one step away. So that push, you take one step away, two steps to change hands and roll back. And then three step is back to the cage for that shot. So one, two, three. There is also just kind of a one step question mark two, where you kind of come up and basically you plant that left foot, change hands, turn your body kind of all in one motion and just get that shot off. So you see like at the professional level, you see like Dylan Malloy do that a lot. Um, he's also like a tank. So it's kind of helpful. So this, this is moves X, goal line extended, five and five. So if you've got beginners, I would recommend, hey, we're just gonna practice moves at X. Okay, great. We feel good about that. Maybe next time we're gonna just start them like right here. Oh, I keep wanting to do the star. You know, we're gonna start them kind of right here and they're just gonna go up and we're gonna do goal line extended. Okay. Next we start um, start in that same spot. And now we're gonna kind of go, you know, five and five. Then you can kind of put them back here and say, okay, I want you to split. I want you to roll. I want you to get here, pop, Z dodge, get here, and then do a rock, uh, rocker. So you can kind of combine them all. So this is how I would prepare for, for every single professional season. So then how you drill these, right, is, you know, if we're going to do kind of one-on-ones, you know, basically you can kind of go the, 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 the classic kind of one-on-one, -on -one, you know, from the end line, you know, where you've got, you know, one, the, the, uh, the attackman. Oh, yeah. That should kill me if we put a heart there against a defenseman. And then, you know, what we like to do is, you know, we like to put cones, you know, right kind of across and kind of create a little bit of a barrier. Um, and, and, you know, typically, you know, this is like, you know, anywhere from like, I don't know, eight to 10 yards. Right. And then up here is, you know, molten hot lava. And what you're trying to avoid is, and everybody's seen this, but you know, the old, like this dodge, that, that one, we're just trying to avoid someone from doing that. And then again, let, let's just say this person, actually, let's say this defenseman isn't like the fleetest of foot. You know, what I want to do is I want to eliminate all of this. And so, you know, in that instance, what we'll do is we'll put a cone right here. And now this one-on-one, -on -one, you know, will start from right here. And basically what we're saying is if you start in your right hand, you've got to go, you've got to go in that direction and you cannot roll back. So now this is where we're practicing you know, those moves that go on extended and those moves on five and five, because you're not allowed to kind of dance back and forth. So we call that a short one-on-one. -on -one. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll start, you know, with, you know, this attackman and defenseman at five and five, and we'll go right from there, kind of an engaged position. So what we're trying to do is work on our techniques that go and extend it in five and five and hammer home to these, you know, this offensive player and this defensive player, that you've got to have technique in kind of all three zones. No questions on that one, KB. I think that maybe that was a stronger segment. Who knows? Or maybe we've just lost people. <laughs> God only knows. So, so that is uh, that was kind of the one-on-one -on -one piece. 
Um, oops. Looking uh, at shooting. So the different elements uh, of shooting. Um, oh, we got it. Is this still? Oh, good stuff. Thanks, Chris. The the one thing that Zoom the the Q and A versus the chat functionality is very strange. So yeah. Um, shooting. So that the you know the the three different elements to a shot. Velocity, accuracy, accuracy, um, and deception, and then in terms of different ways. So the way that you want to think about kind of drills, and the whether, whether you're a parent kind of in the backyard um, or a coach, is you want to have like two different sides of your brain. You want to be approaching this in two different manners, right? Okay, so there's something called a tech. The way I look at it is there's a technical shooting drill, and then what's called a practical shooting drill. So a technical shooting drill is I, I want to work on the actual mechanics of shooting. So how do I get better at time and room on the run and inside shooting uh, as, as well as moves off time and room? So the, the technique, the mechanics, where do I put my arms? What do I do with my legs? How do I engage my back, my torso? And then there's practical shooting, which is what are the types of shots that I am going to see in an actual lacrosse game? whether that's a common scenario that, that is a byproduct of just the sport or that's a byproduct of how we run our offense. And I want to try to create drills that mimic the types of shots that my offense and my style of play actually create. I know it's a crazy concept, but you'd be surprised how many times you see people shooting shots that aren't for technical purposes and are the, that they're never going to actually see within the course of the game. So, um, so we'll to the, to the, to the whiteboard. Uh, okay. Oh man. So, Man, this, should I be embarrassed by this, Chris? Should, should I just roll with this? We're just going to roll with this, right? Okay, we're just going to roll with it. So, um, you know, a couple a couple drills that, that Duke does that I think are, you know, um, pretty good. You know, I think they're pretty good at lacrosse. Um, you know, you've got kind of three cones, right? You've got, you know, your coach, your your loving coach over here. And you've got, you know, some players right here. Um, and, you know, basically this player kind of runs in, coach kind of flips him a ball, right? And then he's catching it behind his head and taking a, a time and room shot kind of from the crease. And th this, like, this distance right here is like, you know, I don't know, like three to five yards. Um, as soon as he's done, he kind of cycles back. Next player kind of runs in so on and so forth. So what you're trying to do here is basically work on a time and room shot without any sort of distance. And so you're trying to have players work on, you know, their three-step process, getting their hands away and behind their body, catch that ball, really set up an athletic base, kind of catch that behind their head and let it fly. And then the other thing is psychological if someone's only like three to five yards away, the ball's probably going to go in the, in the net. And so from an offensive standpoint, if you're seeing, especially if you're a younger player, right, just seeing the ball kind of go in the net is just that, that, that kind of positive reinforcement, you know, that little kind of you know, piece of candy that you're like, yes, I want to keep doing that. I want to see that again. I want to see that again. I want to see that again. Um, and, and, you know, as a coach, I, I also like this drill – especially for beginner coaches, um, because I'll just be like on one knee, like I'll have a huge stack of balls, but I won't have a stick. Like this concept of like needing to use a stick, I think is just ridiculous. Like if you're not good with the stick in your hand, you just like try to avoid it and look for ways that you can do things without a stick. So I just like get down on one knee and I'll just kind of toss the balls up like this. So um, you know, if you're like a, you know, maybe you're a coach that didn't play and you're not like too like keen on, you know, your ability to kind of catch and throw consistently, like 
just ha do drills where you can just be like, you know, lofting the balls um, to your players. The other reason why I like this drill is with, with really beginner players is like, I won't even, I'll just have them start with the ball in their stick. Um, and then they'll just run in and kind of set up shop and shoot. But the, the, again, this is a technical shooting drill. We're kind of working on a time and room from a very short distance. Um, you know, the next is, you know, basically, you know, what, what every coach has yelled at, um, you know, players since the dawn of time, right, is like, take that extra step, right? Like, take that extra step. And so this drill is all about kind of taking that extra step. So again, you can either have the players kind of start, you know, with the ball in their stick, or you can have coaches at each lines. You can have one coach in the middle, right? But, you know, you've got all the balls. You're kind of, um, oops. Um, you're kind of, you know, tossing this ball to this player who's catching it and in two steps is kind of turning the corner and then taking that shot. So you know, you're looking for to kind of get this shot off in, in two steps. So they're catching this ball. They want to plant on their outside foot, right? This is an outside foot step. And then step two is an inside foot step. So this first step should be with their right foot on the outside. The second step is with their left foot on the inside. And then they're whipping their body, whipping their torso back such that their momentum is going to the cage. So we don't want them fading away like that. We want them using you know, this step right here to whip their body around, focus on turning their shoulders such that, that they actually go back to the cage. Um, so you, know, you can kind of, again, go one after the other, you can rotate sides. Um, but the beauty of this is, is you know, every coach I've ever had has been like, take that extra step, and now this is practicing that and in a manner where we're getting a shot off in, in two steps. And, and that Duke has this concept. They do a bunch of drills around, you know, generating a shot in two steps. And we're trying to be, you know, dynamic, explosive as much as possible. Obviously, if you're looking at beginner players, you know, maybe this takes four steps. That's okay. But the kind of two steps is kind of what we're, what we're kind of working towards. You have a couple of question in each the Q and A in chat. Um, okay, do I have to stop sharing to that? Shouldn't no. have to. Where, where did it go? Okay, I can read it to you. Yeah, do you want to just read it to me? Sorry. Sure. Uh, first, asking, just live goalie or not? No. For either of those drills, no. There, there, we're like we're trying to get a ton of repetitions here. The, the time and room for the crease, the goalie might quit your team in the first, like, I don't know. I would probably quit the team. So the goalie might quit the team. So I wouldn't do that. It's not really fair to him. And then the two steps, I, I wouldn't have a goalie. We're trying to get a ton of reps as, as much as possible. And um, you want to see the ball kind of go in the back of the cage. Again, not, not really fair to the goalie. Um, and if you need to create any sort of competitions or things like that, if, you know, these are more advanced players, so pick a you know on that two steps. Pick a spot on the cage that they that they're all aiming for, and then that'll show you kind of how accurate they are. And the other one was uh, not sure if I'm jumping ahead. If you'll cover it later, but do you have any good drills for catching in traffic, simulating pressure? You're not jumping ahead. That's not a part of this formal presentation, but we'll address it later. At the end. <laughs> all right. This is a, now this is a practical kind of shooting drill. And this is, um, you know, what I call fast break shooting. So, you know, you're the coach, you know, you basically are set up in, in, in a fast break and you got three players in, you have more, more than three players, you know, you can create lines, you can go in units, um, but you're the coach right here. And you've got kind of a, a big stack of balls. And basically what you're going through here is the progression of a fast break. So you're looking at kind of three reps uh, to kind of complete a cycle. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to make three passes all to this point, man. So, and then, you know, you can kind of dictate how you want to do it, but the first, the way I start it is the first pass. Okay. The first pass is a skip. The second pass is one more. And the third pass is time and room. Okay. So on this first pass, I throw it over. He is skipping this across to this low lefty for a shot. Now this, this low lefty, it's his job, right? On a fast break, he's trying to find this skip lane, which is, exists somewhere in here. So typically what you're going to see is one of two things. Either he's going to flash up. If the defense is over-rotated, he's going to flash up to create that skip lane or he's going to crash the crease if the defense is late to that skip lane. So if I need to go into that real quickly, you know, you're reading this top defenseman. Oh, that's right. We're supposed to use stars. So if I'm the, the midfielder here and I'm drawing this man, if I am drawing this man, right, he kind of slides and I make this pass, you're looking at this rotation here, right, and then he goes halfway. So what this low left guy is, he's reading this player. If this player is late, he's crashing here for this skip. If he's over rotates and he flies down, right? What is every fundamentally sound slash idiot defense been taught to do? That's turn to the inside. So I'm actually behind him. So if he turns to the inside and rotates down, He's staring here. I'm going to flash behind him to exploit that, that lane. So that's what we're mimicking here on this skip pass is I'm either going to flash up or I'm going to, whoops, or I'm going to crash. So that's feed number one. So I skip here to a shot. On the next pass, this player right here, we want him to we'll get width and then height i.e. a c-cut or curl and his call is one more oh good those are good quotations i feel pretty good about that okay so the second pass is here this is a catch and shot very much mimicking that two-step shot process that we just discussed and then the last is it is a third pass is time and room so now i throw this and now this player physically, you know, takes this, this time and room shot. So once you get the hang of that, then you could throw and you could just yell out what you want. So instead of it being one, two, three, you could yell out, skip, skip, one more, one more, time and room. You can, you can kind of mix and match. The next thing you can also do is layer in moves off time and room. So if I flash up here and I throw this skip pass, now I want this player, instead of shooting this, to, to do a hitch and then a top step or a hitch and a face or a hitch and a roll. I could also do kind of a combo move where I, I hitch, face dodge, and then roll back. So, you know, one more, I kind of throw here, I hitch, I face dodge, and then I roll back, i.e. a circle dodge. So this is one of my, my favorite drills. I call this fast break shooting. You know, this is uh, every attackman I've ever worked with has always kind of loved this drill. Off ball play. Well, I mean, we could spend the entire hour and whatever on this, but quickly, some concepts here are mirror, two man game, and crease play. And then drills one on one plus one or two, uh, two on two, three on three, and then the kind of the build up. So um, I, I feel like you know you guys are hopefully liking this mirror or this whiteboard, uh, or it's kind of what we're all what we all love. Um, so you know what is what is kind of a mirror, right? So you're looking at you know basically. This player goes this way, I'm going to mirror him and go that way. If he then rolls back, 
I then mimic him such that I'm kind of always opposite the ball. I, I think what, what I always try to teach in this instance is, is two things. Number one is I always want to try to get my hip. I'm, I'm talking about this player right here. I'm, I'm trying to always make sure that this player's going this way, okay, and I'm floating opposite. I want my hips facing the ball carrier, right? I want my hips facing him such that if my defenseman, you know, leaves, if, if he leaves, right, and I'm wide open, you know, I don't want to, now I'm in a perfect position. I'm an easy target because my hips are facing that, that, that ball carrier. It's, I'm, he's throwing it kind of on one straight line, on one plane. That's a very easy feed. So that's the first thing I teach. The second thing I teach is I think a lot of players get jammed up because, you know, if this player is going to the goal, you know, this guy's like, I might score a goal. I want to kind of hang around here. Meanwhile, you have backup responsibility back here. So what I like to do is I like to teach kind of this goal line extended as kind of the, the plane of which then I got to make that decision. So once this player kind of breaks that plane, that means now I've got to get on my horse and get behind the cage. And I have kind of two responsibilities. You know, number one is, you know, I'm an outlet or I'm an outlet. Okay. And then number two, this is where now I have backup responsibilities. So once he kind of breaks that plane and gets here now, if my man does come, maybe it's late, maybe it's maybe it's somebody else's man, right? Once this once this once this guy kind of helps, then now I'm yelling out double, double, double. This player punches his hand away, rolls away, and I'm at act, I'm at X, and we get it to X, and now I catch it here, and I'm now attacking the backside. So that's kind of the concept of mirror. And the way you can practice it is, you know, just by going one-on-one, -on -one, and then this is with her defenseman or without, and I'm just mirroring him during that drill. You know, when we go kind of two-on-two, -two, and I'm going just from, from behind right now, you know, a few kind of teaching points here and we're going to we're going to have the, the the ball carrier is going to be kind of over here so this is off ball and what i really want to teach is i want to get the, the goal line extended okay i want to get the goal line extended is what that's is that's going to do is it's going to force my defenseman to respect me there and now i i have kind of hidden whether i'm actually in a two-man game or not so maybe this we actually like this one-on-one -on -one matchup well, now I can go from this two-man game. I can very easily front swing here and kind of get this guy cheating. Or now we've created a mirror situation that we just went over where now this guy can go back and forth and kind of go one-on-one, -on -one, uh, and I'm just in a mirror situation, okay? So that's, that's the first thing is it gets here. Now it creates some self-doubt. Am I going to front swing or am I going to go behind, okay? Now when I come and engage this two-man game, I can actually abandon it and look for a quick little drive by. So again, if this defenseman starts cheating and I catch him cheating now, I'm just kind of a, a quick little cut, right? And this is an easy pass and I'm turning the corner, kind of shoot and score. Okay. The last thing is by getting here is I create an op, oops, I don't want to run a crease. I create kind of an optimal 45 degree angle. And as much as we possibly can, we want to try to set our picks on the tangent of the widest point of the crease, okay, as opposed to at X, because that's going to allow the defenseman to run through the crease and recover. You want to try to set that along the tangent, because then you can turn the corner immediately and kind of shoot and score. So if I set the pick here, now I want this, uh, my, my, my uh, uh, teammate to kind of run away. And then as he rolls back, now we've engaged in this two-man game with these two defensemen. So this is where you, you've got some options. If, if you think that they're going to kind of stay with their matchup, you know, your first option is, is to set a pick. 
which the, the key here is kind of shoulder to shoulder. That's if you think they're gonna stay, sorry. Okay, and if you think they're gonna switch, this is when you wanna you know, slip, slip the pick. And if you're looking at this, you know, you can kind of see this player to stay on the outside. This player's here. You want to kind of throttle down, don't make any contact, and slip between these two players, right, before this switch has occurred. You're, you're very, very rarely wrong slipping a pick. What you want to just make sure you do as best as possible is try to do this below goal line extended, okay, because you don't want to leave yourself susceptible to a defenseman who's going to come over and absolutely murder you and, and where you end up in the hospital. <laughs> That's kind of murder ball. If right, the I, got, first... I have two questions on here. Yeah. If you want me. Um, yeah. The first one, where should the third attackman be when the pair is mirroring, and mirroring each other? So I'm going to get to three on three in a second, but so, well, Okay. Where's the well, okay. Well, now I'm already going. So if you know, if let's like let's just say this, right? Well, like typically this would be like that. So the third attack is kind of up here. That would be like one one scenario. Um the most likely scenario. You also see this mirror concept a lot on wings like this. So if this player kind of goes like that, you know, this player goes like that. If he goes underneath, mirror back that way. And in which case, um, you know, you're, you're probably looking at like uh, somebody here, somebody here, somebody here, somebody here. So the mirror is a two-man concept so um that question about where the third guy is like i don't care because it's it's it doesn't it's not a, a um sorry that was really blunt it, it's the the building block is the two-man game so there is no third human um so that was the two-man game. Are there any questions on that two-man game? The other question was actually, sorry, was back just on the fast break drill. Just real quick, do you do that with, yeah. with D players or no D players? No, in that fast no, break no, drill? D no, no D, no D. No D. That's a shooting drill. Yeah, yeah it's a practical shooting drill. Yeah. Um, so back to this kind of two-man game. The the so again we want to kind of be along this tangent, right? We want to set this pick along this tangent. Remember, you know, if the first pick doesn't work, so let's say we come off of this, right, and they kind of switch. Now you just want to carry, roll back. And then you would repick along this tangent. So that's a concept of re repicking. The other thing that you can do, and different people call this different things, but instead of setting this pick here, is you can work to get around this way at the last second, such that you're actually letting this guy go underneath and then rolling back and then reversing course, and you're actually picking on the other side instead. And then the last thing that you can do is instead of setting this pick, is you can actually run behind the guy for a flip or fake flip. If you're doing that, my recommendation would be to actually throw the ball and then sprint behind it for follow. So that 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 kind of technique is called you know throw and follow. 
And the reason for that is, is this player is relatively stationary right here. So that way you only have one moving body as opposed to two, which is pretty challenging to time up. Now, where that, going back to that mirror, where's the third guy? So this is an instance, if you're adding a third player, if you go three on three, you can go, this is, to a degree where a mirror would be, okay? And what I mean by that is, you know, if the ball's here, you know, we want this player to always be opposite the ball. So he would actually set up over here. And what we're trying to do is lengthen this slide as much as possible. So if he was ball side, you can see that's just a shorter slide. If he was low on the crease, that's an even shorter slide. So we always want to be opposite the ball to create as much space as possible. So that in terms of like mirroring, that's to a degree what we're talking about here. Now, these guys right here, they can either engage in a two-man game or this guy can just go one-on-one -on -one and this guy would be the mirror. So if he went like this, okay, I'm getting here and maybe I want a mirror. This player is committing to being the crease guy. And all I want to do is stay opposite the ball, lengthen that slide, and then if my man dodges and, and my man slides, then I just want to follow the slide. That's the concept that we're looking about here. Follow the slide. And I am either going to be wide open or I'm going to draw a defenseman from another part of the field and create a, a, a teammate that's open or a skip pass. So in terms of crease play, if you're in a three-on-three, -three, you can either go a two-man game, one-on-one -on -one with a mirror and a crease, or a good old-fashioned Triangle rotation. So what's important about this is if this guy's got the ball, we actually want to pinch these wings, kind of pinch in to allow this guy to go either direction. It's super hard. We want to allow him to dance to a degree. And if we're out wide or we make a, a reaction too soon, it's going to be way too hard. So we want to let him kind of go back and forth. And once he kind of commits to a side, that's when we want to then commit to this, get into this back pipe and kind of curling back around. He checks this backside pipe. And then once he kind of turns the corner, just like earlier, now he gets on his horse to get to X to either be an outlet or to have a backup responsibilities. And on this clear through, I wanna to get to this backside pipe to again, create as much space as possible. And then I wanna curl back around or just turn again, back to that same concept. I want my hips to face my teammate such that if my defenseman slides, I can follow that slide and have a very easy feed that I can catch and finish. We're down. We're down to thirty-four KB. So we, we, you know, we're just we're losing bodies. Um, well, you're, you're losing yeah. bodies. Wow. For any of those, for any of those one-on-ones um, and two-on-twos and three-on-threes, that is where we would go live with defensemen and and kind of with with the uh, goalies. In terms of how you get open in a game, uh, this is where you want to use a V cut, a backdoor cut. Um, those are the two most effective you know, techniques. Um, you could also, um, again, try to mirror uh, your teammate that's dodging, uh, or if you're on the crease, stay opposite the ball, and if your man slides, follow the slide. So that's there's there's some um, context with regards to the the where you are on the field, 
um, whether it's the open field, whether you're in a settled set, um, in terms of kind of how you, how you get open. Um, but hopefully, um, you know, that is, I, I think, um, where did I go? Nope, zoom. That, that is a uh, attack play in terms of stick handling, dodging, shooting, and off ball play. That's, um, that's attack play in, in a, abridged hour <laughs> 15 now we're now going on an hour and a half not nutshell that was awesome Ryan. you know me kb i could talk you know i could i'll stay here all night i could i could listen to you talk about it all night so <laughs> it's I, great <laughs> i uh you know one time at the the u.s lacrosse convention there was like no group after me like it was like <laughs> the last thing on like a saturday or sunday and so i like nobody had the room so we just like we just kept going for like a good half hour, 45 minutes, hour. Like we just kept going. And then someone finally came in and was like, you have to stop. And we were like, <laughs> like but, but like, but why? Like no one's like, <laughs> the cleaning no one's people coming here. in here. Go. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was, maybe it was. Um, awesome. Well, uh, Ryan, much, much appreciated uh, for it, for everyone watching still with us. You know, we, we are, we have recorded this so far so good and all the other recordings. So we'll be, you know, sharing this to those who were here, plus for our other coaches who couldn't make it. Um, I, th I think that was that was great. And as I said, uh, if you want to follow up on that, the best thing to do is watch a game. You know, no college games right now for Ryan to call, but uh, you know, the PLL this summer when he's calling them, it's 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 a great learning tool as well. So much appreciated. I think we're, yeah, I don't see any questions. A lot of thank yous. So I think that means you did a good yeah. job. No, K KB, appreciate your, your leadership, um, you know, so, so much. And um, so in terms of, if you're looking for other stuff to watch, you know, the Trilogy Lacrosse Theater, right, um, is okay. something we're doing. And, and um, you know, if, if, if I can do a, a quick plug, you know, of, of, of uh, some other stuff that the Trilogy is doing, just in terms of in the area, um, you know, we do, we do have we do do overnight camps. I know it's a it's kind of a strange time right now, um, just in terms of with everything kind of going on. But um, you know, for people in the New England area, you know, we've got you know Future Aces New England, which is at St. Mark, which is led by Matt Strebel, um, you know, for boys and girls, and, and we've also got a you know, kind of a classic New England sleepaway camp at, at Bryant University. Um, both of those are in July, so I just kind of bring them up because I know you know we're all kind of working through kind of what the timing is. Um, but those are in July and, and we've set up some stuff with regards to, um, you know, cancellation policy that's all explained on our website and then, and then, you know, day camp in the area too. So, uh, we appreciate everything and you know, everybody in Massachusetts and, and, um, you know, obviously we have stuff going on nationally. I know this is kind of a national audience, but with regards to the MBOL, MBYLL folks, you know, we appreciate the relationship so much. And, um, yeah, so, as I said, we have, uh, Two more tomorrow. Uh, Marty Bowes will be on with us at 10 a.m. And then Matt Strebel gets to end the trilogy lineup uh, for the week and uh, tackle <laughs> nice. the whiteboard. So excited to see what Streves can bring for us on the midfield play. I'm sure he'll make fun of both attackmen and defensemen. <laughs> um, so yeah. those, uh, please join us tomorrow night if you can. And again, if not, we'll be recording and sharing. So awesome, Ryan. Stay, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, especially down there in New York City. And uh, we hope to yeah. see you up here soon. Yeah, thanks so much, KB. All right, thanks, everyone. Have a good night.